So guys, today we're going to be doing a review slash kind of use on the amazing Chris Reeves Knives Large Sebenza 21 in Cinco Grind. That's a mouthful, but today we're going to be doing an EDC review on it. And without any further ado guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome EDC content like this. And let's get into this. Like I said, today we are going to be doing a review on the Chris Reeves Knives Sebenza Large Sebenza 21 in Cinco Grind. And I have had this knife for a couple of years, as some of you guys may know, but I wanted to do a full-on review. I think my first review, I talked just a little bit too much about what I personally liked about this thing, which is kind of the point of a review, but it wasn't really an objective, like this knife performs in these specific ways. So I want to do an updated EDC review on this knife because I think I can do it better. And as always, we have some awesome tabletop decorations, fully loaded Glock mag, and an Anova T2 flashlight just to kind of accompany this EDC blade. So to start off, this is of course an Insingo grind, as I mentioned, which is a little bit different from the clip point in the fact that it's almost like a reverse drop point. And so that is the primary differentiation. I still don't really know why people don't like the Insingo grind. I think once you actually get it in person, it looks like a far more attractive blade style than you would think. And for the most part, it actually tends to be more of a practical blade style. And I've really enjoyed using it because it has a nice sweep to it. It keeps the blade kind of swept, but not super up swept. So it kind of allows you to do more of a nice slicing cut like this, as you guys saw when I was uh, cutting the, uh, what is it, cardboard. And so when you have something flat and you cut it like that, I like this in single grind because it puts more blade here. Because like I said, the blade is a little bit more straight, but still having just a little bit of sweep to it. In addition to that, as I'm going to roll in and get some hatred, of course, uh, I'm going to do some penetration tests of me just stabbing a piece of wood. And that's not to show the tip strength of this knife or anything like that, or to test lock failure, or anything stupid like that. I just get a lot of questions when people ask me about the Insigno grind about like how effective the uh, tip is for actually piercing into materials and I have to say that I think it's actually really good for piercing materials This is single grind in particular because how they've ground it you guys can see how they have this secondary grind here and uh, Chris Reeves has actually ground that uh, grind here really really thin it's near cutting edge thinness so as you guys can see when I stab it into the piece of wood the penetration on this tip is actually really good it's every bit as good as a, uh, the clip point version if not slightly better in my opinion but if, if it's not better it's at least at least um, on par with it and so I will say I don't think this is better than like a dagger styled tip for penetration but it is certainly better than once again most people would suspect and so I really do like the Insingo grind it not only looks pretty but it is actually very functional so more on to how this knife has lasted. For those who don't know, I've had this knife and been carrying it nearly every single day for the past two years. So I, I have quite a bit of experience in this knife. Hopefully, I don't know if you guys can see the, you know, like all the scrapes and scratches, but this knife is definitely a user. It is not a safe queen. It does not sit in the safe. This knife does get out and it does get used. And so it definitely shows for that. And so I do have some real life experience with carrying it, cleaning it, and all such. So overall my experiences with this knife have been pretty much just as you'd expect. With a really expensive knife, you really expect a higher level of performance than say something like a Benchmade Griptilian, for example. This is $90, this is $410. So of course there's a quite staggering price differential and for that price differential, you can definitely feel it. There's a level of smoothness and refinement that you definitely 
definitely notice every time you pull it out. And once again, there's kind of so notice with this knife, unlike this type of knife where the grind is just, you know, banged out by, by a robot or a computerized CNC machine, this blade here may also be the same way, but it has a level of refinement and understanding that the maker brings to this knife that it can't be necessarily causes this knife to be a really high performer. Something that I've noticed and really enjoyed about this knife is its hollow grind. And with this hollow grind, it does a really, really good job at slicing and separating materials. And I know that kind of sounds basic because that's what all knives do, but this knife has a really, it does it with a certain level of ease that I find is hard found in other knives such as this and while I still love this Benchmade 5D6 it is certainly not as refined as this in things like grind and things as edge because this edge also is just a slight convex it is very smooth and rounded and once again allows the very cutting edge to be strong but also separate material very easily and that's just a personal experience thing for me. So aside from that, other things I have enjoyed about this knife are, shockingly, the ergonomics. I will say, while I've always loved, or while for a very long time I've loved the idea of having a Chris Reeves Sabenza, I was really unsure how the ergonomics would feel because if you compare it to something like this, where you'll notice deep choil, there's kind of a swell back here, and <clears throat> overall this knife looks like a lot more contouring. And there's been a lot more thought probably done into the handle and ergonomics whereas this you can see aside from this kind of doubled um, choil here there's really just it's like a straight stick kind of design and so when originally getting it I was like I'm not sure this ergonomic design is the uh, best ergonomic design out there but in actually handling it the way it slowly enlargens actually fits the hand really really well and naturally your hand just finds a place there's no weird once again choils to battle with I know with some knives they have like finger grooves and such there's none of that to battle with the hand is really basic but it's once again really refined so that it fills up your hand well and you don't really feel anything lacking in addition this extra cutout here is really enjoyed because I have a few or I've really had I don't have any currently but I've had a few uh, liner locks and this is of course a frame lock but frame lock slash liner locks where there really was no cutout and what you had to end up doing was like digging your thumb into this uh, groove here where the blade would normally go and then kind of kick the blade out or kick the blade like out of its locked position like that <clears throat> and that was really frustrating but what I like about the uh, Sabenza is that they have a generous cut out here so that all you have to do is place your thumb like this pretty much swing that blade back and then close it so that cut out is really smartly placed and as far as ergonomics go it makes the disengagement of the lock really natural so that is another thing I really enjoy about the ergonomics another thing that I also really like and this is something pretty rare for me to say and I think for most people to say but I really do love the jimping on this knife. It's one of the few jimpings that I find honestly not that irritating, especially considering that this blade thickness is not supremely thick. Uh, the jimping is cut in a way that one, it's rounded all around the actual jimpings and so <coughs> And so that adds a level of softness to the jimping, but at the same time, there's a level of firmness because it does grab your skin very effectively. And what you end up getting is this end result of a knife that has jimping that you can lock into and feel positive about, but at the same time, not having jimping that's super irritating. Now, of course, all jimping locked into long enough will irritate you or will eventually dig into your skin in a painful way. So it's not infinitely uh, comfortable, but it is significantly more comfortable than I found most jimpings to be. Other than that, the thumb stud is also really easy to deploy. I found that the retention on this knife is just enough where I know Sabenza does not recommend. They don't like uh, 
flicking out the sabenza they think you should write and prop or bring it out like this i don't care about that because this is my 400 dollar knife and so i'm going to do whatever i want with it so basically uh, i do flick it out but i find it to have just enough retention in its uh, divot that it does not easily come out but allows you to build up pressure so that you can really kick the blade out just at that perfect speed so that's something that i really do like about the retention of the or the detention and the thumb stud for the most part with the thumb stud it does leave a little bit i think to be wanted but for the most part it does work so i also like the blue accenting it's a little hard to see on fit or on it's a little hard to see on video but there is a blue anodization to that i will say with the blue anodized parts to this knife they are the anodizing is really light anodizing so over the past two years the main part of this uh, thumb stud is still blue but the actual very tip of this has all the anodizing rubbed off and so that's a little unfortunate I will say but that's something that kind of Sabenza likes to do is have a really light anodizing so do not be surprised if the anodizing on your blue parts so this is blue there's also this back here which is blue and then there's a part which I have currently off of this which is for lanyards right here that is also blue and so the anodizing on all of those does rub off pretty fast so just keep that in mind and that is a little unfortunate but just something that Sabenza does so aside from that uh, overall carry of this knife this is like I said the large Sabenza so you can see it's definitely larger than something like a mini griptilian by at least a half inch if not more and so this is definitely a little bit of a bigger knife to carry EDC but for the most part I found because it has titanium handles and overall the blade is not that big or like this overall handle design is not that big I found the weight to carry to be pretty good and what I think is really interesting about the titanium is that it gives you that really solid metal feel so it feels really sturdy but at the same time there's kind of like a weightlessness to it so that you feel like you're holding a sturdy piece of metal but at the same time it's titanium so it's not as heavy as you'd expect like an aluminum or especially a steel uh, constructed knife to be so I really do enjoy that Aside from that, or the next thing, is the clip. I actually really enjoy this clip. It works on a variety of different thicknesses of pant levels, but I will say, keep in mind, this clip, hopefully I can show it here, it is not super deep. So keep in mind that if you have any thicker pants, that will cause the clip to sit a little bit higher. However, on thicker pants, I've ran consistently for like months, um, during the winter especially. I haven't found any deformation in the clip. Like this clip is not easily bent out. I know there are some clips that are rather easy to bend, but because this is a titanium clip, it's very hard to bend out of place. Even if it's bent to, as you guys can see, like an abnormal level, it's it's not very easily bent out of place and I have not had any problems with this one bending in any weird way it still has just as much retention as it did day one and the d retention is not super super hard or heavy and so this is not really a pants ripper as you guys will know some some clips are just so uh, hard and retention they really rip up pants and this one is not that at all so that is another positive to this knife and I do like that uh, this knife also does you or you can run it without a clip I think you have to get though like if you don't want this awkward void you have to get like a specialized like filler for this which is kind of bogus if you ask me they should really send it for $400 but anyways uh, you do have to get kind of like a filler or else you'll have a weird void where this pocket clip is but you can take it off of course and run it without a pocket clip and I don't know if that makes as much sense to do with the large Sabenza because once again having like a four inch knife just kind of like sitting and floating around in your pants pocket can be a little bit weird and cumbersome whereas if you have something smaller like this this is about the size of a small Sabenza I would feel a lot more apt to just throwing something this size in a pocket without a clip overall performance of edge retention and such 
Uh, I have not had any problems with any of the components of this knife, as you'd pretty much expect from something this expensive. The edge retention has been just what you'd expect CPMS 35 vn to be. It's slightly better than S30V, and I really do enjoy having a more premium quality steel, because I'm kind of one of those lazy people that likes to use their knife, but not really like take care of it. So, you know, if like water gets spilt on the blade, you know, or if I cut something, I know a lot of what happens to me is like I'll cut things that are frosted like packaging that is frosted or cold and so what will happen is there will be like a transfer of water from that packaging onto the blade and so then like without even thinking there will still be like water on the blade and I'll just swing it closed put it back in my pocket and not even remember that I just had like water all over the edge which it sometimes makes certain knives rust but this knife, as far as rust prevention or as far as rust resistance goes, it's pretty good. I have not had this blade rust out on me at all, though I haven't taken it into like salt water environments. But just normal water environments, it has not rusted out. And like I was saying, with edge retention, you can cut a lot of things before this thing really goes dull. So it's a nice edge that you can pretty much just cut things, forget about it, and you know, move on. And you don't really have to worry about the edge retention ever being an issue. I have not personally had to sharpen this one at all, but every like few months I'll strop it really good just to make sure it keeps its keen edge. So that's basically all I do for edge care with this knife. And once again, it's not really that intensive. Hope you enjoyed that quick look and review on the Sebenza, the large Sebenza 21. And just my thoughts after a few years of carrying and using this knife, I still love this knife just as much as I did when I got it. And I think that really attests to the quality levels and the amount of performance you get out of this knife. Not just the value, because there's really not as much value in this blade but something that I think is really important about a knife that's really expensive is getting a knife that really just has that second cool level to it so that years ahead once you get it and you ha you've had it for a few years that that performance level never lacks and that you're just as apt to carry it today as you were two years ago and that's what I often find in this knife and that's what I often find in this knife and what I really really love about it so anyways guys, that's all for now, and as always, God bless, and I'm out.